everybody, I'm Brian the Blue, and welcome back to Current Calamities, where I take a break from the past to look forward to the future with the games of the present. <laughs> Mario vs. Donkey Kong, a remake of the first game in the puzzle platforming series that is not often talked about among Nintendo's popular franchises. I sometimes forget the Mario vs. Donkey Kong games are a thing. I oftentimes forget Kid Icarus ever existed. If you don't make enough of them, you're just asking for the fanboys to give you a number of reasons to care that you're not going to listen to. I do have some experience with this series. I played the second game to death and played a little of Mini Lamb Mayhem. Never had a chance to play the original, but I have played the predecessor, Donkey Kong 94, a great game in its own right. Guess there's no better way to fill the gap than to play the complete overhaul Nintendo's providing to us, and on the year the series turns 20. So let's remind ourselves how all this got started. Turns out DK gave in to his capitalistic needs. When he sees a commercial for the new Mini Mario toys, he's overcome with the urge to buy them all. Unfortunately, he's too late to buy any as they've sold out at the toy shop, so he does the next best thing break into the company factory and steal all the new product just as Mario's coming into the office to do something, but now he's got a bigger task at hand as he's got to get his product back. Got a feel for Mario. I'd be pissed too if my toy company was about to go bust on the fact that a stubborn ape stole all my merchandise. I wouldn't want to go back to my plumbing business either. So we gotta follow that gorilla in a tie to our first level. So, if you never played a single game in this series, it's pretty simple to understand. You as Mario have to navigate around a given playfield first to get a key to open a door, then to retrieve one of your mini selves to beat the level. Each level always has a gimmick to it, or something different to worry about while containing one gimmick that'll be common throughout the world. Mario, meanwhile, can jump and pick up objects and even enemies, at least when they're not considered harmful. A one-hit death can get annoying, but I think what annoys me more is that his boots have the power to block bricks. Those Brooklyn pipes made his shoes tough. Every world has six levels to get through, and on occasion you'll have a bonus level appear for an opportunity to get extra lives. Once you recover all the mini Marios in one world, you'll first have to guide them in a unique level made just for them, then you'll have the opportunity to battle Donkey Kong one-on-one, -on -one, where the minis act as your hit points, but you don't have to worry about that too much, as this encounter was easy enough to get perfect. I'd say the game has been pretty easy to get through thus far, granted it is only the first world, so we'll see if the challenge ramps up a bit in DK's jungle. Think he's let the place go a bit with all these piranha plants sprouting about. In fact, every level around here has an animal problem in one way or another, but they're easily solvable or avoidable. One thing I forgot to mention is there are three presents scattered around every level. Collect them all and that level will be given a star as a designation of perfect completion. All of this, in my opinion, is pretty easy to do. While the layouts change with the vines and elevators, the challenge doesn't change too much. But I do like the nod to Donkey Kong Jr. with this world's boss fight. I bet the plumber hasn't gotten over that at all. Now we're on to the third world at the Fire Mountain, and I'm gonna be honest with y'all. No matter what I show, I come to the same conclusion. This game is easy. Too easy. I mean, I'm not expecting too much from a Mario game, but man, I'm either just too good or I'm playing an early childhood game in disguise. I mean, I slip up every now and then, but there's no real penalty at this point. I have enough lives from doing the bare minimum that it's barely even a worry. One thing that baffles me even more is that you can choose your preference and playstyle where the casual option looks easier. I don't know why I'm freaking out this much over a kid's game, but if it's already this easy, why do it need to be easier? I'm telling you, I dedicated a whole day to this whole game and I had everything complete leading up to the final world. And I'd say by then there was definitely more of a challenge with the levels being bigger and having to stop and think how to go about things or die more often than not due to trial and error. Only took seven worlds and a few hours, but glad to get some difficulty out of this. And I don't want my complaints about the difficulty to be misconstrued that I don't like this game. It's all right. I think if I played the original, I would like it more. Cause when you're young, you're also dumb. 
Regardless, defeating DK one more time reveals that the stubborn monkey don't got any more mini Marios in his sack, so what's better than stealing toys? Kidnapping employees, of course, so we gotta take him out one last time in proper Donkey Kong fashion, avoiding barrels and freeing the toads while giving DK a taste of his own potassium. After three hits, he falls off the superstructure as we watch in horror as he keeps falling. And the credits roll. Gruesome. Thank you for the playing. Hope you enjoyed casual monkey murder. But after the credits, DK is still falling, but fortunately lands safely on a truck shipping more mini Marios. Just the plumber's luck that he grabs all of that stock and the chase continues. So luckily the game isn't as short as it appears, for there's some more to do once the base game is over. We have the plus world with more levels to play, these seem to be more like the guidance missions in every world, but you just have one mini man with a key. You also got expert levels, which are the brain rackers I've been waiting for, but you need to perfect so many levels to unlock them, and if you have to replace some levels, why not also try time attack and complete the levels below the target time? Now all this makes the game worth the price. If you didn't know, this game is 50 bucks. Some may consider that outrageous. I would if it was 60, but Nintendo's gonna make all the money off their golden plumber. But I would say that's enough of this remake. Too bad it had to take a while before it got interesting, but I'll be looking forward to seeing what I can do next. Game has been decent overall, the fun factor is there, and so is the graphical update. It's just been the little choices that were made that make you go, hmm. $50? Hmm. An easier difficulty setting for an already easier game? Hmm... No real change in challenge until after the base game? I'm turning into the next Scott the Waz before your eyes. So with all that being said, what's my overall opinion? As I said, I have some fond memories with the series, at least when it was on the DS. It made sense to be on a handheld system being a puzzle platformer and all. I'm not sure if it made the most sense for the first game to be on the hybrid system. Mario vs. Donkey Kong is still a solid game, a polished remake that is a fitting tribute to a series not always remembered among Mario's many other successful franchises. I'm glad it's getting some love again, but there's still much to be desired. Kinda wish those expert levels were there to begin with, would have been a better balance of the difficulty that I mostly found too easy. At least I know if I ever get the original on the GBA, I might perform a speedrun. Still, it's good for what it's worth, but I'm sure many will attempt to buy it secondhand before getting their hands on it. 50 bucks is a big bill to swallow for such a short game in the grand scheme. Should save up for other important things, like a mini Mario amiibo I wish Nintendo would make. I know they're not in the forefront of their marketing anymore, but if any Nintendo character deserved an amiibo, it's the Mini Man. I think the 50 bucks would be more justified if they made a compilation of the whole series. There haven't been too many made and you can get the digital exclusives on a physical cart. Charge 60 bucks for all I care, it's a better idea that would print money. So, what do you think? Do you agree with me? Or have your own thoughts? Let me know by leaving a comment. If you like what you see, like the video with those thumbs up. If you think anyone else would like this vid, share it around. And if you want to see more of me, this show, and others, hit the subscribe button. I'm Brian the Blue. Thanks for watching. I'm going back to the past, and until next time, I'll see you in the future.